Now to the Middle East, where U.S. officials say a Houthi missile attack has killed three people aboard a Liberian-owned cargo ship in the Gulf of Aden. The Iranian-backed group has been attacking ship near, ships near the Red Sea since mid-November, but this is the first fatal attack. A defense official says more than 65 Houthi attacks have been reported on commercial ships since the violence started. According to the U.N., the ongoing attacks have caused a 42 percent drop in the Suez Canal's monthly transits between January and February. CBS News national security correspondent David Martin has the latest. The aftermath of the first fatal Houthi attack on commercial shipping. Three dead, three more in critical condition. The rest of the crew forced to abandon ship. Earlier this week, the Indian Navy had to come to the rescue of another burning ship. And over the weekend, the Ruby Mar, leaking both fuel and its cargo of fertilizer, became the first vessel to sink as a result of a Houthi attack, damaging undersea internet and telecommunications cables as she went down. The ship, the Houthis sank, ended up causing the, uh, the severing of these undersea cables. Our assessment is the same, uh, that those cables were cut uh, most likely by uh, an anchor dragging from the Ruby Mar as she sank. The severing of three of 14 cables running under the Red Sea disrupted up to 25 percent of communications between Asia and Europe, forcing companies to reroute traffic until they can be repaired. You have to go to the point of where the last known fault was, find the cables, bring them up to the surface, and splice the fiber and repair the cable. That sounds like a, a pretty involved operation. And it's a dangerous area to be operating in. And David, uh, Martin joins us now from the Pentagon. David, quickly on those cables, is there any concern that they would disrupt anything happening in the United States? And could this happen again in some way that might be further disruptive? Well, I'm told the effect in the United States has been negligible, mainly because uh, there were 14 cables and only three of them were uh, severed. So that uh, leaves you alternate routes to route your communications on. The communications companies are doing essentially what the commercial shipping companies were doing on the surface, which is uh, rerouting uh, the, uh, the traffic. And as long as these attacks continue, sure, there's, uh, there's a chance that uh, more cables could be uh, damaged. To try to stop all this rerouting, the U.S. has been hitting the Houthis for pretty much, you know, for a while now. How effective, I mean, it kind of feels like they haven't been that effective, but give us your assessment, how effective have those uh, retaliations been? Well, there have been uh, four rounds of strikes by the U.S. and uh, Great Britain, and that doesn't count the almost daily uh, whack-a-mole strikes the U.S. conducts whenever it spots a missile or a drone about to be launched. You can expect more of the same from the U.S. and Great Britain, and you can expect more of the same from the Houthis, who have vowed to keep this up until there's a ceasefire in Gaza. And then, finally, David, more than a dozen commercial ships from various countries have been hit um, by the Houthis since November, but not a single military vessel. Is that notable? Have they tried and, and gotten knocked back, or is there some strategy at play here? It's a combination of good work and uh, good luck. The, uh, the Houthis have launched scores of missiles out into uh, the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden, some of them in the direction of U.S. warships. So far, U.S. warships have a perfect record in shooting down uh, drones and missiles that were headed to, uh, towards them. Um, but the day that one of those drones or missiles gets through and hits a U.S. Navy warship is the day this shadow war between uh, the U.S. and Iran becomes something entirely different. David Martin with the details, as always, at the Pentagon. Thank you very much, David.